Welcome back to The Conversation Continues with Dr. Trish Gorman, leading the Agile organization. We received so many great questions. Want to take some more? I do. All right, Thank great. you. Thank First you. question is from Petra. What are some or are there any low cost changes we can make immediately to improve our agility? That's a great question, Petra, and there definitely are. Some of them have to do with looking at your own uh, skills and your own practices. I mentioned looking back a couple of weeks and saying, where have I been actively trying to find new knowledge? But you can also start asking people to give you feedback. When you pitch an idea or when you're sharing your progress, ask people to say, where am I wrong? What could go wrong? Okay, so opening up the dialogue, opening up the solution space, opening yourself up to have a little bit of a, uh, of different input is, is going to make change and, and it's totally low cost. The only cost might be that you perceive it might be slowing you down because you may be on a trajectory and some of that feedback or some of that input might mean you have to rethink it. But that's good. That's improvement. Great. So Michael asks, I like this question, are doing hobbies important for generating new creative ideas that one can bring to an organization? Uh, that's terrific. And actually, some people now are, when they're interviewing candidates, they're asking, what do you do outside of work? Mm -hmm. What are your hobbies? Right. You know, if you're a coder, if you're a gamer, if you're a bird watcher, if you, you do wood carving, what can you bring from your hobbies? And some of it are, are kind of traits. Maybe it means you're patient if you work with wood. But maybe it means you're really observant. But maybe you're working with wood and actually wood has changed and there's new technologies and new glues and different people you're interacting with. So whatever kinds of clubs or hobbies or sports you do, um, playing music, you know, some research is showing us that people unlock, you know, really creative ideas while they're doing something else that they're deeply um, in flow with. So you might be doing a jigsaw puzzle and suddenly you think about, you know, something that you really need for your project at work. Right. Um, really a great question, and but also difficult to do when we're all on 24-7 work and we feel like, you know, we need to be connected right. all the time. So step back, do something else, mm -hmm. and invest in something else, mm -hmm. and you'll really be investing in your professional success as well. I know Professor Bill Duggan would agree with you with strategic intuition. I mean, that's yeah, the core tenet of what he believes, so yeah, we're happy good. to hear that. All right, Ola Kunle asked, if you have to lead an organization from scratch, so this is not a, you know, no his history, no, mm -hmm. you know, there's people who are married to a certain way of doing things, but from scratch, should develop an agile mindset, what things would you do first? Um, if you have the privilege of starting from scratch, in some ways, that's a real advantage. So you can start with a culture of trust and sharing. You can start by giving employees and teams problems to solve themselves without imposing too much structure on them. You can start by um, asking everyone to think about solving the right problem. You can start with communication techniques that are very open and transparent. I've seen a lot of small companies that literally, you know, people can read each other's emails. They're putting up, you know, client conversations, you know, around the room so they can see what other people are hearing. Um, it's such a privilege to be able to be able to start something up with all the core tenets of agility and transparency and a real growth focus. Great. This is a great question from Curtis because I think this is where people might get a little concerned mm -hmm. is that how do we remain agile but also remain focused on our vision, on our goal. Mm. It sounds like when you're being agile, you might be getting off track right. and you know, letting people solve problems, letting people do everything. It's so important to have that dynamic tension between we're all doing this in service to a vision. We're doing it because we want to become you know, the world's platform for multiplayer games. We're doing it because we want to cure cancer, or we want to bring something to market or solve a real pain point for families or for mm -hmm. millennials or for mm -hmm. truck drivers. So knowing who your customer is and knowing why you exist mm -hmm. is, is the motivation for all the agility. And when you lose track of that, it's a great question because it's got to be top of mind 
And again, lots of mechanisms we can we can share about how to do that. Well, and I always, you know, I've, I've mentioned this in previous webinars. I really believe in this philosophy of the North Star, uh, you know, as, mm -hmm. as recalibrating you. So when there's mm -hmm. tension on a team, when there's, mm -hmm. when we feel like we've lost our way, if we can actually look, okay, that's the goal, let's recalibrate mm -hmm. here and, and pause yeah. and, re, you know, reevaluate what, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes he, he's right. People lose sight of the goal oh, and they're just in yeah. agility. Well, because you're focusing on so many sub goals. Right. So you can be in a meeting where you're saying cut costs. No, we need to spend that money. What about our budget? Right. And somebody can come up with what's best for the customer, mm -hmm. what's best for the client, what's yeah. best for our, our organization a year from now or five years from now. Yeah. Change that shift, make that shift, mm -hmm. and often that'll break a kind of a deadlock. Um, but how often are you, do you have the courage to be that person who says, right. you know, who's our real Who's our real audience here? Why are, why are we here? Right. Are we really here to save that money right now? Right. Or are we here to build something for that, that uh, stakeholder? And who wins if I win? Well, that begs the question then, who should be that person? Or is, again, is that just unique to whatever organization you're in? Like, who should be that person who's keeping their eye on the prize? Everyone. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> and this is the hardest thing, everyone. I really, I, I work a lot with strategic leaders now, and they come from every part of the organization. They come mm -hmm. from... You know, summer interns, I and mean, I just heard a story recently of a summer intern who went and found time to talk to the CEO to criticize him and to say three or four things that he thought really needed to change right. after being with the organization two weeks. Wow. Now, the end of that story could be, and that person is right. fired, yeah. or and that CEO is, you know, got right. a trophy of that, you know, that intern's head on his right. wall. <laughs> um, but actually, the CEO said, fine. You can be my coach for the summer. Right. Seriously, this is this is the best kind of experience. You know, this is the, a really good example I've heard recently, and it's true. Um, but I don't know if I would feel that way. If a student came to my office and told me how to change how I taught my mm -hmm. class, would I have the humility and the openness to say, right. "Oh, let me hear more. Please tell me more about how I'm terrible at what I'm doing." Oh, right. Right. but you can't frame it that way. It's tell me more about how I can be better. Right. But right. anybody who, even in not in a leadership position, can do that. Um, and having that, raising your hand, um, I worked in an organization where one of their core tenets was the obligation to dissent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does that mean? It doesn't mean I, I can dissent if I want to, and dissent, mm -hmm. you know, just means I can disagree with power. I can speak truth to power. Right. It's my obligation. If I see something that I don't think is being productive or taking us in the right direction, I have to speak up. Right. And that's the culture you want at the foundation of an agile organization. Really yeah. hard to do. Very hard to do. And I think a lot of leaders are just n simply not told the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah. and you know, they've got to be they've got to reiterate probably all mm -hmm. the time, I am open to the truth. But it, you yeah. know, again, it's, it should be approached respectfully yes. and with data. <laughs> No, yes. I mean, they're no, going to need... Exactly true. Right, and this yeah. is how we kind of tie up a lot of these threads because right. we've talked about a lot of different topics here. But that idea of really listening, actively listening, being engaged in the conversation um, and being ready to have a point of view, though. I'm right. not listening so much so I can just nod along and right, agree with right, you. Right. But I'm really listening. Active listening. Yeah. Active listening yeah. and finding ways, finding room for us to find a common platform to build from. Right. We're not going to agree on everything right away. We shouldn't. I mean, you don't want your marketing people and your production people and your operations people and your quality people to all have you know, some uniform party line all the time. Right. They're bringing their expertise right. for a reason. Right. Right. But you need to find the common ground, and that often is, as you say, the, the North, North Star. Star. Yeah, right? I, think it, I think it dissipates a lot of tension. Oh, it absolutely does. When we recalibrate and say, like, listen, we're not fighting personally here. This is about this goal that we're going towards. Right. So you can disagree and then be great friends afterwards. And then afterwards. be great friends afterwards. Exactly. So last question here from Suzanne. I like this. How can an agile be used by an employee not in a leadership role? So you sort of touched on it now, mm -hmm. but it, yeah. maybe to begin the agility. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's definitely the listening, having those conversations. You don't have to be in a leadership role. Right. But also, try. I mean, I talked about a little bit earlier, you know, having someone drop the leash. That assumes you're the leader. But you can ask for more freedom. You can say, trust me on this one. Let, let me, you know, figure out how to do this next bit, whether it's designing an attribute for a product or whether it's figuring out when and where your next team meeting will be or whether it's right. having a client conversation. Right. Um, you know, let me take the lead. Right. How many times do you actually ask for that? And often you might find that there's not any resistance. It's just you haven't, you haven't asked. If you are getting resistance, then I would say focus on really solving the right problem. Right. Being able to bring something to the table and say, 
here's what I th think is really an opportunity to either stop mm -hmm. destroying value or create value or accelerate our process. Come with an idea, pitch it as you would pitch to a, to a client or someone outside the firm. Pitch it to your own colleagues. Okay? Okay. Use all the same influence skills and all the same process. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're not really trying to have to grab, be able to do a power grab but you are trying to harness that energy we talked about. Right. So. so we've got about 30 seconds, 45 seconds left. Just, you know, some final thoughts on when, when the people out there that are watching mm -hmm. close out from this webinar, what's the first thing they can do that is an exciter for them? Oh, that's a really, that's a really good takeaway. I would say the first thing you can do is think of somewhere where you can give power to someone else and let them shine. Where can you stop trying to control and back off and trust and you'll actually be creating something better for your organization or your team or even mm -hmm. just for, you right. know, a colleague you're working with. Right. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for joining us for The Conversation Continues.